So far, we've been looking at trigonometric solutions for finding a resultant force uh, from a bunch of different force vectors. And this works really well when you only have a small handful of vectors. But once you start adding or increasing the number of vectors and trying to find the trigonometric solution uh, with those vectors, that just gets way too cumbersome. So when there are more than just a few vectors to add, the trigonometric method is just, it's not the right approach. Uh, instead, we can break up each force into its components and then find the resultant force that way. And that is what's known as the analytical method, where we break up the forces into their components and then do the math on those components to find the resultant force. So let's say we had this particle right here, and this was uh, particle A. And on this particle A, there were three different forces. So over here we had uh, force A, and then we had, let's say, force B going this way. And then let's just draw one more, force C, uh, oops, force C uh, going down and to the right. So this particle right here has three forces. And we know that the resultant of these three forces is going to be equal to A, plus b plus c. Now, if we look at one force at a time, we know that if I, well, if I did this, first let me just draw a reference frame here. We'll do this in the 2D Cartesian coordinate system, and you have your x and y axes uh, pointing up and then also to the right. Now, if we looked at just force A, this force right here, we can see that we have two different components this force can break into. We have the AY component, and then we have the AX component, and these are vectors. Now, if we do the same thing for forces B and C, we'll do something similar. So you have uh, this BY force going this way, and then this BX force going that way. And then for C, you have something similar. You have CX going this way, and then you have CY going down. Now, when I look at uh, this force right here, force A, I can write that as AX times the unit vector I plus AY times the unit vector J. Now, remember, these unit vectors have a magnitude of 1, but the I unit vector denotes a direction to the right, and the J unit vector denotes a direction up. This AX and this AY, those are the scalar quantities of this AX and AY vectors. Now, we can do the same thing for B and C. So just to finish off this uh, equation, we can say BX times the unit vector I plus BY times the unit vector J. And then for C, it's CX times the unit vector I plus CY times the unit vector J. You'll notice that in this side of the equation, there are two main components. We have all the uh, scalar quantities multiplied by the I unit vectors. And then we also have the uh, vertical unit vectors uh, here, J. Now, if I rewrite this equation, I can group all the I terms together. So I could say AX plus BX plus CX all multiplied by the unit vector I. And then I can do the same thing for the y component. So we have uh, ay plus by plus cy times the unit vector j. What's important about this equation right here is that if we sum all the scalar quantities in the x direction, we would get the x component of the resultant force. And if we did the same thing for all the quantities in the y direction, we would get the y component of the resultant force. So a shorthand way of saying this is that the Rx component, the x component of the resultant vector, the scalar quantity, is equal to the sum of all the forces in the x direction. And similarly, uh, Ry is equal to the sum of all the forces in the y direction. So this analytical method uh, really has three different steps to figure out what the resultant force is. The first step is to resolve each of the forces into its components. And we did that graphically uh, here on the diagram as well as the actual like analytical um, method here. So 
each force, A, for an example, had the X component and the Y component. And we did the same thing for B. It had the X component and the Y component. And then for C, uh, it also had the X and the Y component. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to look at all the forces uh, in our system and resolve each of them into their X and Y vector components. And then step two would be to find the x and y components of the resultant force. So that is this step right here. Once we have all the components in the x and the y direction, we can sum all the forces, all the components in the x direction to get the rx component, and then do the same thing for all the forces in the y direction to get this ry component. And then finally, the third step is to find the resultant's magnitude and direction. All right, so that's step three. How do we do that? Well, I'll just uh, scroll down right here. Uh, and remember, once we figured out what our x and our y is, those are the values of the scalar components of the our x vector and the our y vector. So if I were to redraw that diagram that we saw up uh, at the beginning of the video, you have this same particle A, but now you have this, let's say this is the our x vector, which is just the summation of all the forces in the x direction, and it's going to the right. And then you also have your ry uh, vector right here, uh, which is the sum of all the forces going uh, in the vertical direction, the y direction. So once you have this diagram, you can see that if I drew some guides here, you could see that the resultant uh, vector is going to start at A and it's going to end where those guides intersect. So uh, to draw that a little bit more clearly, we have this resultant vector that goes from A and ends right there. And this is our resultant vector. And you can sort of see that this diagram makes a triangle depending on which way you look at it, right? You have this triangle down here, or you can use this triangle. It doesn't really matter. But the point is that the magnitude and the direction can now be found because we have the Rx and the Ry components of this resultant force. So let's do the magnitude first. How do we figure out what the magnitude is? Well, if this is a triangle and I can see that the uh, y side of this triangle is the scalar quantity of this Ry vector and this side is just the scalar quantity of this rx vector, I could say that the magnitude of r is going to be equal to the square root of the magnitude of rx squared plus the magnitude of ry squared. So that's just Pythagorean theorem, right? We're just taking the sides of the triangle, uh, squaring them, adding them, and then taking the square root of that value. So this right here, at least in a 2D Cartesian coordinate system, gives us the magnitude of r. Okay, so that gives us the magnitude. What about the direction? So the direction is going to be this angle right here that this resultant vector makes from the horizontal. And again, if we're looking at this and we see this little triangle here, we can say that the tangent of that angle is equal to, well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that is going to be the scalar quantity or the magnitude of our y over our x. Now, if I take the tan inverse on both sides, I get theta is equal to tan inverse of r y over r x. And that is how we figure out the direction. So great. Now we have the resultant's magnitude and the direction. And that's pretty much it. That's the general strategy for figuring out what the uh, resultant force is when you're given a bunch of different forces acting on a particular object or a particle or in a system.